All right, Eric, we're back. We so are. we've been talking a lot about mental health and the transition and, and how to get yourself from kind of your your mental health in a stable place so that you can even start thinking about transitioning. And uh, now we're we're talking about what does transition look like? We're talking about applying for jobs. We're talking about interviewing for jobs talking about going out and networking and you're talking to people and you're trying to reinvent yourself or at least get your brand into a different space so that you're ready to share with I'm ready to be in the private sector and you're trying to prove that to people and that happens a number of different ways but yeah. you know we're talking about applications for jobs and interviews for jobs and things like that and uh, we talked about a little bit about this but how does uh, how do you do you prepare yourself for that interview process um, to answer some of these questions that are kind of tough? You know, I mean, people who've never been in military law enforcement, they might ask, you know, kind of the questions that all of our civilian friends have ever asked us in law enforcement, like how many people have you arrested? Have you ever shot anybody? You know, what's when, the last dead body that you saw? You know, right. just things that you would never <clears throat> say that to another human being outside of somebody who comes out of law enforcement. But how did you, how do you prepare for that? How do you deal with that? Yeah, I think it was a big change for me, you know, because in law enforcement, we all know how stringent the background investigations are and how they go over every single little detail and they leave no stone unturned, you know, for the most part. And, um, you know, there's so many checks and balances in place during the hiring process, like the polygraph and the psych and stuff like that, that, you really just have to be on your A game at all times, you know, and the corporate sector is nothing like that. You know, fortunately, unfortunately, depending on where you work, it's nothing like that. So when I transitioned out of law enforcement under, under duress, um, you know, I came face to face with those corporate applications and some of them are different than others. Every single one is different. Um, it, it seems like, but a lot of them, you know, they have that question on there. Have you ever been discharged involuntarily or terminated from any employment? If so, yes. I mean, if yes, ex please explain why. You know, and I struggled so much with that question on so many different jobs because, you know, no one wants to put that they were terminated in, from a law enforcement role. That has so many negative connotations with it, especially with the political climate nowadays and, you know, lawsuits and use of force and all, all this stuff that, you know, it's not like saying, hey, I was let go from Kohl's, you know, it's right. I was terminated from the fourth largest police department in the country. Oh, you must have done something really jacked up, you know, and trying to explain that to a corporate recruiter who doesn't understand, who hasn't walked in your shoes, who doesn't know what you're talking about can be an emotionally triggering event all in itself. You know, or just writing it out again can be emotionally triggering. How do I phrase this in a way that <laughs> doesn't make me go to the t top of the rejection pile as soon as I hit submit? You know, like, is there a way to phrase it that is better than others? You know, and, and then it leads you into integrity issues. And do I tell the truth? Do I not tell the truth? Because the corporate sector, unless you're applying for a high level role, it is 99.9999% likely that they will not run a reference check, that their background check that that is run through a third party contractor will be absolute crap and probably won't even cover the gamut of your employment references. And most likely, again, 99.999%, they will never know what happened and why you left. That's right. You know, that is that is the likelihood of applying in the corporate sector. There are, there are no stringent background investigations for most roles. And They're not going to call anybody. Exactly. You know, we're, unless we're talking about a sensitive position or one that requires a clearance or something like that, those are all, you know, um, exceptions and not the norm. So you do have quite a bit of leeway in articulating why you transitioned out of law enforcement. Again, the question is, is how honest do you want to be? You know, and, you know, for me, I can only speak for myself, but I struggle with that significantly because, you know, I, I need a job. I need to provide for my family. But who wants to put all that crap on a on a on a corporate application, you know, okay. and um, so eventually what I ended up doing was, um, you know, I articulated it in a manner that was both honest, 
but didn't leave room for me to give the entire story. So, for example, when I left the city of Houston, my res resignation in lieu of termination was a confidential agreement that I signed between myself, our union, and the chief of police. If you look at my actual city of Houston HR records, it says that I left voluntarily. And so I decided from that moment on that I would put left voluntarily from the city of Houston because, again, it was confidential in nature that I resigned in lieu of termination, but also my official HR employment record reflected that I left voluntarily. So I wasn't having to go into extensive detail about the circumstances, but I could still be honest and say that my official HR record says this, you know, now if the HR, the HR record, like, you know, at the small, the police department where I was terminated from says something different, I, you know, it says terminated, then I had to put terminated, you know, and there's just no way around that. You know, at the end of the day, for me, it's an integrity issue. And for me, if I got a job where I lied on an application or I was less than honest on an application, that would haunt me, you know, yeah. and um, that would, I would say, hey, I got, I got this job under false pretenses, you know, and that's the last thing that I would want to do going into a job is not be able to say I'm, I'm 110% committed to being here. I was honest, you know, I'm, I'm not happy about my past, but I was honest about it, you know, and that's, and that's the whole purpose of networking, you know. I was that's gonna the whole, ask you how yeah. you get past that. Yeah, networking. that's the whole. I think it's huge, and right? again, I didn't. I was lucky and I was blessed that the Lord provided a job for me, even with those circumstances. You know, uh, my boss was a former FBI agent. He understood where I was coming from. That played a huge role in me getting that job. I highly doubt that I would have otherwise. So the Lord really put him in my path and put put that role in my path and I was able to successfully transition due to having someone in a, you know, in a law enforcement role or a previous law enforcement role. But that is few and far between for most corporate roles. And that's where the power of networking comes in is, you know, knowing someone at the company, having a friend of a friend at the company, having some sort of contact who can either put your resume on the hiring manager's desk or make a contact with someone there and say, Hey, this guy's applying for this role. I think you should interview him because of A, B, C, and D. I think he would be a value add to your organization. He's not perfect. He's had some, you know, scrapes and bruises in, in law enforcement, but he's trying to successfully transition out. He's trying to make a fresh start. And that's something we can all identify with, you know, because especially if you've been in a, in a, in a hiring manager role, if you've been in a people leadership role, you know that, everyone needs a fresh start, you know, and that people who receive a fresh start can sometimes exceed the productivity and any other standard measure of anyone else on the team because they're so grateful to have that fresh start, you know, and that's what I've learned yeah. is yeah, exactly. They're hungry. Yeah, they're hungry. They're hungry. Just, I totally yeah. agree with you. You know, yeah. they're probably going to work harder than, than most because they know that they're they're getting that second chance, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, 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 I firmly believe, I, I mean, I've been a hiring manager multiple times now. And, you know, if I firmly believe that, you know, if we can admit our mistakes, if we can say that we've learned from them and we can put in place a plan to make sure that we don't repeat the same mistakes, then why, why the heck shouldn't I give you a chance? You know, like that shows a level of emotional maturity that a lot of people who are in their 60s or higher still don't have. Yeah. You know, um, I want someone like that. I want someone who's a problem solver, who's curious, who's inquisitive, but can admit mistakes, can own it and say, you know what? I know what caused me to make that mistake and I'm going to put a plan in place to make sure that if it does happen again, either the 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 you know, the trauma is mitigated or lessened or it doesn't happen at all, you know, because I'm committed to being better each and every day, you know, and yeah, that's, uh, yeah, exactly. I, I think what's interesting is, is 
in the private sector, like in, in, in law enforcement, there's like a zero failure, right? Like if you <laughs> fail, like that's a bad day, right? Somebody didn't right. come home. Uh, and, but in the private sector, it's encouraged. You've got folks like Elon Musk who will blow up their, their, their spaceship on the, on the launch pad to, to understand what makes these things fail. And so the private sector, I think that's a, that's an interesting dichotomy there. The private sector is much more accepting of failure. And and good way to approach it too, by the way, I think, is if you come at this as I, I failed at the at some things in my past and I and this is what I've learned. And I think that's a great approach to have because the private sector is so much more accepting of that. Yes. But so that's the in transition. Let's let's pause here and then we're gonna come back. We'll talk about post transition. Now that you've gotten the job, now that you're in the role, you're doing these things. Let's, then we'll talk more about, you know, some of the, the different mental health aspects that we should be sensitive to. So everybody stay tuned and uh, we'll be back in a sec.